So I would say that this tournament is pretty important because like it's actually pretty well known. I'm seeing casters that I would watch when I would try to learn the game actually casting our games. I've competed in the last two Tespa tournaments and we were like so close in the last two and then it's like we are finally going to live finals and I am proud to be part of the team that's made it there. I'm David Ramos, my battle net is so legit. I'm AJ, my battle net is Vincent Man. I'm Ricky, my battle tag is Ricky TW. And we are the Hearthstone team for Highlander Gaming of UC Riverside. I've been playing Hearthstone pretty much since closed beta, so approximately three years. I've been playing for like about two years. I've been playing since like, I would say probably the beginning of my third year. It was right before TGT was released, so I would say like almost two years. Hearthstone, it's kind of like magic. It's a turn-based strategy card game where every turn that passes on from turn one on, you have more options. You don't just like play out whatever your hand is. Throughout the game, depending on what deck you're playing, you're playing minions, spells, and your goal is pretty much to take out the opponent. Yeah, and there's a mana curve. And there are many ways to kill your opponent, by either by outlasting them or just killing them as fast as possible. You know, there's nine classes. Each class is 30 cards, and you pick uh, cards from a class-specific set and a neutral set. So there's a lot that you can put your opponent on based on what class they're playing and what neutral cards are like really popular. We qualified in the top eight finals for the TESPA Collegiate Hearthstone series and we are currently re rewarded 1600 each and we're playing for the top prize of 10k each. The TESPA Collegiate series is a nationwide tournament in the US. It's split into four regions, North, East, South, West. We've been playing since like the middle of last quarter, so about nine weeks, and we are top two in the West region alongside UC Berkeley. Our first opponent for a round of 64 in single elimination was actually against Cal Poly Pomona. Actually during phase two, they had the highest standings. They were 6-0 for that. And Whereas we were bottom seed of West region. <laughs> it was actually, this was two days after the expansion actually dropped. Like, Meta's completely, completely different yeah. and I feel like at this point it was just a matter of who can build better decks, like, or who can come up with better win conditions. We ended up going 3-1. Okay, yeah. we lost the first game, Hunter versus Mage, because they got three ice blocks and were able to reach us before we could kill them. The game after, I'm pretty sure they just went we ended warrior up warrior three times. Yeah, they went warrior three times, and we were actually able to yeah. three zero. There was warrior. a highlight where they played dirty route in turn two and gave us a seven eight with taunt. That was a. Uh, no. Was it them? No, that was. Oh, it was that. I remember seeing the guys yeah, in action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And bad. then during our last game when we were two one, we played hunter versus warrior, and caught the two fattest cards in our deck, in top deck mode. Yeah. So. That felt good. We missed Lethal. We, missed we, we got a really big chewing out by Twitch chat for missing Lethal. But uh, we won. So. But we addressed, yeah. We, yeah. we knew that. We, yeah, we were fine. We were, yeah, yeah. As long as we knew that we missed Lethal, that makes it. Yeah, the problem was at least just that we okay. played too fast. Yeah, we played. We were super excited. We were like, yeah. that was around 64. Money. Yeah, we didn't get punished for it, so that's. Yeah, cool. never punished. Okay, so uh, round of 32, we we're against Stanford. They're actually an opponent. We versed in phase two mm -hmm. also. We beat them in phase two, three zero and I remember they ran a very aggressive lineup with you know Pirate Warrior Agro Shaman, I think. Yeah, Agro Shaman. So actually yeah, I felt like their decks weren't up to date with the new meta yet. They, they just were just going what was what was still good while everyone else was developing decks. And our decks were pretty tuned. And we ended up being three zero against them. And our round of 16 matchup was against Santa Cruz, and this was the really high stakes one because, you know, 
it was the 1600 prize and live yeah. finals, the reason why we're here today. It was a pretty close series. They had a handlock versus the taunt warrior matchup where we we had a bunch of 50 50s to win the series outright but and we lost like four of them yeah it boiled down to like the last game where we played taunt warrior versus quest rogue it's an unfavorable ball uh, matchup for taunt warrior yeah but luckily their decks were built in a way that made it probably getting the quest done more inconsistent. They had cards like Violet Teacher and Morose that made it so like once you complete the quest, it's just impossible to win. But they never got actually got the quest done. We ended up pulling it out. They built their decks to try and like counter us, but I guess we can say. I mean that's partially why they ruined, ruined their. The... Yeah, they definitely won uh, Handlock with their text. They ran double Siphon, double Blast Crystal. Yeah, and Black Knight. And well, Black Knight. It was hard to the get eater of secrets. It was hard to get our, yeah, to have yeah. any of our big stuff to stay on the board. We were losing at first. We somehow was able to, like... Kind of outgrind. Yeah. And they would take advantage of their poor draws. We got pretty low in HP. We, we like did. Eight yeah. Eight or something. But we're dropping walls, low. like, every turn. Yeah, just hoping we can't sap. Yeah, we were able to stabilize, and then we were able to close up yeah. the game. We ended up being 3-2 in that one. It was a very exciting win. Because of that win, now we're in the round. Now we're in this, three. yeah, we're in this hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Feels good, man. <laughs>
Yeah, West Coast Finals would yeah, be like yeah. the sickest thing. That would be so sick. <laughs> it's, it's, it's all like home turf for us, right? Yeah, yeah we flew out, but um, but like I'm from SoCal. I'm from San Diego too, oh, so nice. like yeah. um, in the area. So after understanding how the format really is, it's basically you throw one of nine classes into a bucket of three classes, and then like you each play. Player, each player has one bucket. Yeah, and each player is responsible for one bucket. We're Which not, consists of three classes. Yeah, we're not assigned our own classes. We're assigned our own bucket. And the bucket, pretty much, we want to line up as many good matchups as we can. It's really high stakes that, like, you play one class, and then win or lose, you just don't play that class anymore. It's like, you have to maximize getting the right matchup each time. And it's like, yeah, we also have to consider throwing buckets, or throwing classes into one bucket, expecting this matchup and then throwing bad matchups in other buckets, but then they throw the good matchups in and it's like, I don't know, it seems really complicated. It's pretty complex because, mainly because like in the meta right now, you, you're not sure like what deck your opponent is bringing for each class, like it could be anything. One of our matchups that we'd want to queue into theirs, it could either be like 70% in our favor or a 30% in our favor, depending on which deck it is, but it's the same class. So it, it really makes it hard to like actually know like how well like even after the drafting process it's like you never actually know how well your deck is going to do against theirs until the game actually happens. The things that we worry about with this format, we at least know the other teams are worried about this format. We are concerned with like knowing what's a good matchup and trying to get it, but like their opinions about matchups can defer from our other team and you know they could end up giving us a good matchup without us knowing or without them knowing. We hit up Berkeley because they're the other West team and we decided to coordinate and pretty much help each other with this drafting process because our deck lists are posted at the end of Saturday night. Since we're in opposites of the brackets, it doesn't matter like if we actually tell each other like what our decks are. If we ever face off against each other, it would be on Sunday in the finals. And at that point, it doesn't matter what decks we have. It's just, I guess we know each other's drafting strategy, but that's it. But and I think it's more, it would be more beneficial for both of our team and theirs if we both like coordinated on like how to draft properly, like bring them together. After like some prep work with each other, we had like good ideas on like what to do. It was pretty productive. We were able to help each other. Yeah. One thing I found interesting is that like a lot of the matchups that like we would consider favored and or we would consider favored they would consider unfavored and vice versa so i feel like a lot of how this tournament is going to go down is like even though we would consider matches to be favored or whatever isn't like it doesn't 100 percent mean that yeah it's going to be a favorite matchup like it's very opinionated yeah, i think it's actually a really important factor is that our confidence and our comfort with a certain deck will pretty much decide how we think we can win each matchup. So on paper, matchups could be favored or unfavored, but like it's our own personal experience with the deck that will determine like how we actually think the matchup will turn out and whether we can get a win off of it.
are getting ready to have the players take their seats now. It is UC Riverside walking in. They actually have a huge fan base in the audience. Uh, these guys uh, are from a, a relatively local school. They were able to drive here. Actually, and it is time to get into game number one. We have uh, Warlock, looks like a zoo-style deck, Ooh, against what looks like Jade Druid with a Yogg-Saron from Rutgers against kind of ramp-style druid decks has generally gone very much in the favor uh, of the Warlock They're very deck. happy, very sad about the result of that, but not too happy about this game as it goes 1-0 in this set over to Riverside. I'll take a look at how things are going in this match so far. We can see the result of the other match, and yeah, Rutgers fell in both sets so far, so they are down 1-0 in set one and set three, so a big hill to climb going back. I think we're, we actually may see equality into Ragnaros here from uh, from UC Riverside to ensure that they are guaranteed to heal from Ragnaros. Kind of a kind of a uh, you know quirky little play you you often uh, end up making in Paladin because the uh, quality sets the max health of your minions to one, you're guaranteed to get the heal in your face. Are they just going? They are not going to equality. They're going to be one three. We see we see the the prayers coming out from Rutgers here. It and will not heal face. Rewarded. And the celebration as Pyroblast will end the game. I, we have to ask her, because obviously we won't have the chance to see this deck again, so I have to know. Kazakis has to be in this deck. Oh, well. Raza has to be in this deck as well. Ooh, Charge Devils with an attack face, yes! Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah. For those of you who may be confused by that, uh, the Can't Attack Heroes this turn is a battle cry of Charge Devil Sword. So if you get it into play other than summoning it from your hand, other than playing it from your hand, you can attack with it. So coming off of Atiyash, coming off of Free from Amber, you can just get him. And also just... By the way, get a King Mosh into play. Sure. <laughs> I, I've actually yet to see the animation. That's uh, it's pretty sick. It's awesome. The yeah. animation is great. And the more the more minions there are that are on the board that get killed by it, the, the more the slashes come across. It's really cool. And yeah, the writing is long been on the wall, and Rutgers takes game number two in this set. We made a three mana five five. That's pretty good. <laughs> And yeah, oh, oh, well, that's gonna do it. Bloodlust with a full board that will end the game on the spot. Rucker is gonna tie up this set, and uh, yeah, we're gonna be looking to continue this series next game. Yeah, we actually saw uh, over on UC Riverside, there was a little like kind of sarcastic clap that came out, just like, oh, you got Bloodlust, congrats, you got on the board. I really do think uh, UC Riverside looking, but taking a look at where we stand in set one, uh, things are pretty divided. The next win will divide, or decided rather. And then in set two, we are looking at uh, one win in a game going over to Rutgers. Uh, and then in set three, we have, again, a situation where the next win will decide it. So, uh, you know, despite these losses, UC Riverside is actually not in, in that terrible of a place necessarily. <laughs> the the yeah, prey just... again from Rutgers here. They need a burst card. Blood Cell Cultus is not it. Okay. But they're Armor not dead. Up. They are not dead yet. You know, they still have a, uh, you know, their, another window until Alex Straza comes down. And Frost Nova? That, you got to ping the, the Blood Mage, them? but you can't actually, you don't have enough mana at that point right? to play the Alex Straza, so. Do they have, they, have they played both barriers or just one barrier so far? Uh, they played one barrier. But it's possible, not all decks are running two. It's true. Yeah. But, you know, now it, they, they need Barrier or Frostbolt to just stay in the game. Yep, and we're going to see the ping come out onto that Blood Mage Thalnos. It is Barrier or Bust. And yeah, they... Taking their time, pinging the Blood Mage. That is Medivh's Valet. That is not going to do it. But they just kind of had a series of, of kind of dry draws in terms of finding the key cards to allow them to stay alive. While Rutgers had the very timely draw of that Fiery War Axe to enable the South Sea Deck enemy. Look, just the, the absolute, you know, elation from Rutgers as they won a game that was looking like it could be very bad for them. You just you know, see Novelord's lips, oh my god. Uh, how things went there. Novelord picking up the win for Rutgers in set number two. That is the first set win of the match. And now each of these other matches, or rather each of these other sets, uh, are tied up at one game apiece. So Rutgers need to pick up just a single additional game to close out this match. And it looks like you know, they're, they're conferring quite, uh, quite heavily in terms of exactly how they want to make this decision. It looks like uh, that they're they're even like inputting things on the, the the other computers here. I'm curious what exactly if they're taking notes, perhaps on the uh, you know their their messaging uh, services there, or whatever the friends list. All right, it looks like uh, Rutgers actually did free, so we have a bit of a tech uh, error. We're gonna look into getting that fixed up, but is, that is oh god, that's what we're gonna see exactly that. Oh, we look at the expressions goodness. on Rutgers' faces. They cannot believe what and just happened. And the Jules McCall, fill out your curve, yell, boom, shakalaka. 
The, an the animation is super sweet, too. So. Oh. And that is 12 damage to the face of UC Riverside. And All right, well, you know what? You got Snipe if... if, if is they, there, if a, they is there another Stonehill Defender? Which I don't think there is. I think no. we've seen both. And okay, Brawl. Is this Brawl? That is Ally Armorsmith. That is going to take four damage from a Snipe. <laughs> which means one attack punches through it, which means King Mosh is nine damage to the face, and that is going to do it. Yeah, UC Riverside concedes, and Rutgers wins the set and the match, and we'll move on to the semifinals. Are to be yeah. here, to be on this stage, and competing at this level. These are a couple, of, uh, a number of guys who just really seem to really love Hearthstone, and uh, it really shows. So you know, you do realize that uh, you're also fighting in West Coast territory, and you also eliminate the last West Coast team, especially a SoCal team. We drafted correctly and we got we got the buckets that we wanted and yeah I think we did a good job drafting. We figured that my bucket would be favored against Knob Lords, Ricky's bucket was unfavored and AJ's bucket was favored. It's weird because Knob Lord actually thought like the opposite and we kind of guessed what uh, decks they were playing. We actually guessed that it was actually Jade Druid and because of that, we decided to queue one, one of the, the worst classes into it because it is a favorable matchup, and it ends up, which is a Zoo Warlock. Probably yeah. unfavored against the other two classes. Jadroid would be favored against our other two classes, which was Shaman, Shaman and a Warrior. warrior. It, that ended up happening, and we ended up winning the first game because Zoo Warlock just yeah, was right and did this play. And at the same time, we were playing another game. It was AJ playing Miracle Rogue versus their Paladin. We, we pretty much top deck Lethal, but we had a bunch of outs. It was just we needed one more damage, and we top deck one damage in the end, and we ended up winning that. So we started with a pretty good score uh, with two wins with Ricky and AJ. The next game was Paladin versus Freeze Mage. We played it right at first. We were thinking about most of our plays, but then like in the very end, um, we were concentrated on other stuff and we kind of like missed like a pretty obvious play that was kind of game winning, which pretty much cost us that match. It's also partly due because like our inexperience with the deck and that specific matchup. So yeah, we ended up losing that game. The one after that was Shaman versus Priest. Like this was the first coin flip matchup where we're pretty much guessing Warrior would be favored against Priest and unfavored against Hunter. And Shaman would be favored against... Yeah, Shaman would be favored against Hunter and would be unfavored against Priest. So it was just a 50-50. We decided to go with Shaman and we queued up into their Priest. There wasn't really anything we could do. We ended up losing that. So after that, it was AJ... It was Hunter versus Shaman. It ended up being lost because... Another 
that's cute. The game after that, yeah, it was my Freeze Mage versus Noblord's Pirate Warrior. Uh, it is a favorable matchup for us, but... And I think we played very correctly, but so did they. They played to their outs and it worked out to them, and we pretty much dug through our entire deck looking for like our win, win condition cards, and they happened to be at the bottom three. We dug that deep into our deck. We just ended up losing that. There are like a lot of factors where that they needed to happen and it went their way, mm -hmm. pretty much. I was thinking if we can win this one, then we have a good chance of winning. What ended up happening is in the Warrior versus Hunter match. Uh, we were in a really good position, we knew what to do. We threw away quests, which lots of people know about. But we threw away our quests, we uh, looked for like Todd answers minions. for the early games. We found the uh, Todd minions like on curve too, we played it out. We thought we were in a very good position. It was a uh, turn five and we were expecting like the best plays they can do would be coin high main because they didn't use coin yet into a second high main and we had answer for that so we felt like if that game was to go on we'd probably win it but what ended up happening is on turn five uh they actually disconnected and a regame happened in the regame we definitely didn't have as strong of a start they had a better start yeah, yeah they had a better start than they had the last in the first game we didn't have as much board presence which is very important in this matchup. They got lucky and we got unlucky because like there are a bunch of cards that like if we got we would probably be in a favorable position or like bring us back into the game like Brawl but we never drew Brawl there were like 10 cards left in our deck when the game ended and we ran two copies like if we ever drew a while we would survive like a lot longer but we never drew a brawl. In the matchup, like, as Hunter, you just want to have, like, sticky minions and stuff. There's a card that randomly gave them pretty much, like, one of the best cards you can get. Actually, I'd probably say that is, like, the best card you can get against Tonfire. The card that pretty much, like, kills all damage minions, and since they have board and we had Tom's up, since they had a hyena, it made the hyena bigger. And the body of the actual uh, legendary was also huge. So then after that, it was just conceit. Yeah, it was pretty much it was pretty much over then. And that was a uh, two loss of the bucket. Yeah. So there's so then, yeah. there's no sort of bucket up, game. Yeah, we ended up losing it. Overall, like if you consider everything, I think we played well in the most part. Or most of our plays were well. Like there's like a couple of things that uh, we should have reconsidered or spent more time on. But uh, and then I think we played mostly well, and I'm just glad that we actually made like top eight. Like and I actually got to go there and experience all this. Yeah. There was 803 schools that participated, and we were one of the teams that actually got this far. Really proud of us. To the people who is watching, you know, the, this guy is so legit. You know, he's he's like the best free mage player in NA and this is what he what he talks about every single day. Really glad lots of people actually supported us for this. We're sorry we lost first round. We hope to make it further next time but again really glad we made it this far. Yeah I would just say I'm definitely gonna prep like a lot more and then you know probably make it even further for sure the next time. Just hope people would still, you know, watch us, I guess. <laughs> this is just storyline, like, nobody ever, like, makes it far, like, the first time you go, like, you have to experience loss, and then you have to take that loss, turn it into a strength, pretty much. You wanna pretty much conquer your weaknesses, uh, what my weaknesses were from this, and I'm um, going to go ahead and improve, improve on it, and, yeah, take it further next time. Like they said, thank you very much for supporting us. We hope to see you guys more at live events. If you guys go to UC Riverside, please check us out at HLG underscore UCR. How much does this camera cost? Be honest. <laughs> the lens itself was 400 Oh god, the just the lens? Shit. Holy whole body shit. was 900 yeah. Oh damn, that's like 1300 <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Alright, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, David Ramo from Battletag is so legit. Oh, I'm next to the dog. <laughs> and we are... <laughs> no, no, please, that's so edgy. Please, no, hell no. Was that face first? Wow.